Welcome to Metlacto. Today we are going to discuss vitamin B9 which is also called folic acid. In this lecture we will discuss the different aspects of the vitamin B9 or you can say folic acid. So first of all we will discuss the classification of the vitamins. Let's start. Vitamin we divide vitamin into two categories. First one is the water soluble and second one is the fat soluble. Those vitamins which are dissolved or soluble in the water are called water soluble vitamins and those vitamins which are soluble in fat are called fat soluble vitamins. Water soluble vitamin usually easily excrete from the body but fat soluble vitamins has some difficulty in their excretion. So here you can see that vitamin divided into two water soluble and fat soluble. Fat soluble include vitamin D, E, K, A. So here four vitamins include in the fat soluble vitamin and you will remember it by the mnemonic DECA. So here is the DECA is the mnemonic of the fat soluble vitamins. Next we divide the water soluble vitamin into two B complex and non B complex. Non-B complex vitamin include vitamin C which is also called ascorbic acid. B complex will further divide into three categories energy releasing, hematopoietic and others. Energy releasing vitamins include vitamin B1, 2, 3, 7, 5. These are basically the energy releasing. Hematopoietic vitamin B9 and 12. So here in this lecture we, our main focus is on the vitamin B9 which is actually the B complex and hematopoietic in nature and last is the other vitamin B6 uh, which we will discuss later. So first of all we will discuss the sources of the vitamin B9. So vitamin B9 is richly present in the you can say that leafy leafy green vegetables vegetables have lot of vitamin B9 and you can say lima bean lima bean and liver contain lot of folic acid or vitamin B9 next we will discuss the difference between the folic acid and folate because lot of students get confused between these two terminologies so first of all we will clear this difference so here you can see that you lot of here folic acid and folate. Folic acid is actually the synthetic form. This is actually the synthetic form and folate is actually the natural form of the vitamin. This is the natural form. And this is the artificial form or you can say synthetic form which is mostly used in the fortified foods etc. So this is the main difference between the folic acid and the folate. Next we will discuss the mechanism how folic acid convert into the tetrahydrofolate and further it used in different things. So let's see. First of all here you can see this is the structures of the folic acid. It has basically the three components. So first component is the pteridine. Here is the first component which is called pteridine. This is the first component of the folic acid. Second component is the para amino, para amino benzoic acid. Benzoic acid. In this situation at the para position you will see the amino acid and last is the glutamic acid. Last is the glutamic acid. Last one is the glutamic acid. So here th these are the three components of the folic acid or you can say vitamin B9. So uh, we, our main focus is on the pteridine and we number it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So here these are the different numberings of the carbons and the nitrogen. So first of all here you can see this is a person and he will take diet some diet having folic acid. 
where you can see folic acid and folic acid in the body will convert first of all into the dihydrofolate folic acid first of all convert into the dihydrofolate in that situation you will see that the two hydrogen will be added to the folic acid in NADPH2 convert into NADP positive in that situation two hydrogen add in folic acid and convert into the dihydrofolate at what position two hydrogen add at position 7 and at position 8 so here are basically the two position here you can see at position 7 and at position 8 two hydrogen will be added next dihydrofolate convert into the tetrahydrofolate 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 in that situation two hydrogen has been already added to the folic acid now two more hydrogen will be added at the position 5 and 6 5 and 6 so here are basically the four hydrogen and 5 and 6 so this is the tetrahydrofolate first of all two hydrogen will be added to at the position 7 and 8 then at the position 5 and 6 so here are basically the four hydrogen has been added to the folic acid and it result in the formation of the tetrahydrofolate tetrahydrofolate tetra mean four so here is the main compound form from the folic acid now we uh, there are some modification happens in the tetrahydrofolate so basically three modification you will see in the tetrahydrofolate you will see four modification first one is is the you will see at the position and position 10 you will see the addition of the formyl group addition of the formyl group this is the one modification Second modification, you will see that at the position 5 and 10, you will see the addition of the methylene group. This is an other modification form of the tetrahydrofolate. Next is the, you will see that the N5 position, you will see the uh, methyl group. You will see the methyl group. This is the third modification of the THF. At the position 10, here you can see at the position 10 and at the position 5 you will see three modification for myl group methylene and methyl so these are basically the three modification in the end this modification form of the thf tetrahydrofolate involved in the synthesis of the purine this is involved in the synthesis of the purine purine synthesis and purine th purine includes Two nucleotide first one is the adenine first one is the adenine second one is the guanine second one is the guanine so these are basically the two nucleotide synthesis and uh, DNA basically form for having four nucleotide in it so basically DNA has four nucleotide AT and GC. So these are basically the four nucleotide of the DNA. And here you can see adenine and guanine. Adenine and guanine also present in them. So it means that if the if we block the if we do not take folic acid, then these nucleotide cannot produce. And if these nucleotide adenine and guanine not produce, then the synthesis of the DNA will also be blocked. So in that situation, DNA is very much important in the synthesis of the or in the uh, division of this cell. So we can block the cell synthesis or cell division if we do not take folic acid. So folic acid is basically involved in the formation of these nucleotide which involve in the formation of the DNA and ultimately division of the cell. Next is the second uh, modification is the methylene. In that situation, this is important in the thymidine, thymidine monophosphate, thymidine monophosphate synthesis. 
This is the one function of this modification form of the THF. Next, next modification, you will see the synthesis of the serine. Actually, glycine convert into the serine. Amino acid, amino acid, glycine convert into the serine in the presence of this modification form of the tetrahydrofolate. So it means in the formation of the amino acid, there is a role of the uh, folic acid, THF, which is a tetrahydrofolate. So now last modification form of the tetrahydrofolate involved in the synthesis of the methionine. Actually, homocysteine, homocysteine convert into the methionine, convert into the methionine. So, in the conversion, homocysteine convert into the methionine and it is, its conversion is occur in the presence of the tetrahydrofolate modified form. So, methyl form is involved in the conversion of the homocysteine into the methionine which is involved in the several function. So, these are basically the different form of the tetrahydrofolate uh, which uh, happens or which is present in our body. So, next, if there is a deficiency because these are basically the water soluble vitamin and they easily excrete from the body. So, you mostly see the deficiency of these vitamins folic acid. So, in that situation, if there is a deficiency, you will see two major disorders. So, first one, you will see the nutritional anemia. So, first of all, we will clear the concept of the nutritional anemia. Anemia means deficiency of oxygen carrying capacity or you can say deficiency of the hemoglobin. So, in that situation, nutrition means, it's mean uh, you, there is a deficiency of some nutrients in the body which causes the anemia. The anemia which caused by the deficiency of the nutrition is called nutritional anemia. So here you can see a uh, red cell has three forms. First one, if the uh, size of the RBC is normal, then it is called normocytic. If the size of the RBC is small, then it is called microcytic. If the size of the RBC is large, then it is called macrocytic. So, so you will see that 80 to 100 micrometer cube. This is the normal size of the RBCs. If the size is smaller than 80, then it is called microcytic. And if it is 100, greater than 100, then it is called macrocytic anemia. Microcytic anemia you will see mostly in the iron deficiency. Iron deficiency, pyroxidine, pyroxidine and ascorbate. If there is a deficiency in these compounds, then it causes microcytic anemia. And protein energy malnutrition. If there is a protein energy malnutrition, nutrition, malnutrition, then you will see the normocytic. The size of the RPCs will be normal. But most important thing, which is our main focus, is on the macrocytic anemia. So in that situation, you will see deficiency of vitamin B9, which is the folic acid, which is the folic acid and vitamin B12, which is the cobalamin. So, cobalamin, vitamin B9 and vitamin B12 deficiency causes macrocytic anemia. Macrocytic anemia also called megaloblastic anemia. They are also called megalo, megaloblastic anemia. This is also called megaloblastic anemia. In that situation, why do we call it macrocytic anemia, megaloblastic anemia? Because in the bone marrow, in the bone marrow and the blood, peripheral blood, in the bone marrow and the peripheral blood, you will see the precursors of the large immature RBCs precursors, which are also called megaloblast. You will see RBC precursor. You will see RBC precursor which is called megalo, megalo, megaloblast. These are basically the immature form of the RBCs. So on the basis of this, we call megaloblastic anemia. Because you will see in the bone marrow biopsy and the peripheral blood, you will see uh, megaloblast which is actually the immature form of the RBCs. So this is the main focus and you will see macrocytic anemia in case of 
फॉलिक एसिड डेफिशिएंसी नेक्स्ट एनटीडी न्यूरल ट्यूब डिफेक्ट देयर इज एन अदर डिफेक्ट व्हिच इज कॉज्ड बाय द डेफिशिएंसी ऑफ द फॉलिक एसिड इट हैज टू कैटेगरीज फर्स्ट यू विल सी द स्पाइना स्पाइना बैफिडा स्पाइना बैफिडा in that situation this uh, you will see that there is a protrusion of the spinal cord on the back side of the infant next you will see that encephaly encephaly in which the part of the brain or portion is missing in the infant or the newborn so this is an other defect or caused by the deficiency of the folic acid next we will discuss why we see that folate is deficient in someone so there are lot of reason first one is you will see in the pregnancy and the lactation so in the pregnancy and the lactation feeding stage you will see that lot of folic acid deficiency so this is the major uh, cause of the folate deficiency so next is the you will also see that in the uh, absorption defect absorption defect if there is a uh, pathological defect in the intestine then absorption cannot proper so in that situation folate cannot properly absorb in the body which is also the another cause of the folate deficiency next one is the uh, if someone take diet having low folic acid then it also causes the folate deficiency and another important one is alcoholism alcoholism someone who take alcohol or consume alcohol too much then it also causes folate deficiency because alcohol interfered in the absorption of the folic acid next is the methotrexate 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 is also involved because methotrexate uh, block the enzyme actually here you can see that uh, there is enzyme which is called the dihydrofolate reductase so actually these reduction at this point and this point you will see that there is a enzyme which convert these folic acid dihydrofolate and tetrahydrofolate if methotrexate inhibit this enzyme so it also causes the folate deficiency next when to use folic acid so important actually uh, the major and uh, you will see that lot of cases in the uh, pregnancy Uh, in which you will see the lot of folate folic acid deficiency so it is ad advised to take folic acid before conception before conception and you will also see that at first first trimester so this is the main two situation at which you should take you should take folic acid before conception and first trimester because in the first trimester or first week of the gestation that folic acid is demand where folic acid is used in the formation of the brain parts so in that situation these for in the first trimester folic acid demand increase so if there is a deficiency then the uh, pro, uh, formation development of the different parts of the baby will not be uh, developed properly so how much amount uh, should someone takes of folic acid so in that situation 0.4 mg per day of the child bearing woman should take 0.1 mg per day folic acid but if there is a uh, you will see that there is a defect in the first pregnancy then you the the increase or the demand of the folic acid will increase so 10 times increase amount of the folic acid should be taken by the woman who face first pro, uh, who face problem in the first pregnancy so this is all about the uh, folic acid which is the uh, vitamin b9 if you have any question then you may ask in the comment section thank you